Hi, my name is Anna Fargo and I'm the author of The Umbrella Mouse and it's one and only sequel, Umbrella Mouse The Rescue, which takes place a few weeks after this one. And I'm going to do a very short reading of chapter two. Sorry, it's so short, but it has to be short because there is a spoiler on almost every single page of this book. And I don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't read the first one. But what I can tell you is that Pip is still with Noah's Ark, the French resistance group that she finds in the first book. And sadly, not everyone you meet in this one does make it all the way to the end. So the second book opens with a funeral remembering those that have passed away. And Pip and Noah's Ark are interrupted by an uninvited guest. And they're going to have to work out what to do. Chapter 2. The Intruder. Madame Fourcade, Pip cried as she raced after her friend. Something's coming! Suddenly, cracking wood echoed in the forest, and Noah's Ark whipped their heads towards the sound and cowered in alarm, spying a black shape tumble through the air and crash into the ground ferns below, just a short distance from where the animals were standing. What was that? a rabbit asked, thumping the ground with his hind leg. Everyone stay completely still, Madame Fourcade hushed, prickles bristling all over her body. Slowly take cover under whatever you can, she whispered, and do not huddle together in the warren. Spread out. All our work will be lost if everyone is captured. Thunder boomed as Noah's Ark scurried under the low ferns and thick brambles tangled across the forest floor. We'll investigate, a squirrel said, scaling a nearby tree trunk, with another squirrel chasing her from behind. Bounding across the lofty branches, they peered into the undergrowth with flicking tails. It looks like a crow, madame. Is it moving? whispered the hedgehog as loudly as she could. Pip stretched up on her tiptoes, but she saw only the forest swaying in the wind. We can't be sure, the other squirrel answered, jumping to another branch and peering from a different angle. It's covered by the undergrowth. Rabbits come with me and Henri, Madame Fourcade's eyes blazed. Tread lightly and be careful not to be seen. Wait for me, Pip dashed to them. The three rabbits gazed at the hedgehog with their ears twitching warily upon their heads. Fine, Madame Fourcard sighed, knowing there was nothing she could do to stop her. Henri and I will be right behind you. A rabbit offered his front paw for Pip to climb. She darted up at his shoulder to sit at the back of his neck. Beside them, Henri the stag dipped his head to the ground, and Madame Fourcard clumsily clambered up his nose and scaled the length of his face to stand between his ears. Go, oh, Madame Fourcard whispered, towering above them from Henri's full height. And be ready to run as fast as you can. The rain arrived and thudded through the forest as the rabbits crept forward, brushing the undergrowth away with their noses and padding softly on their long, powerful legs. The fallen bird's stark black shape inched into view, lying lifelessly on its stomach with its head flopped on one wing, splayed out on a bed of battered ferns. Is it dead? Pip asked, staring at the blackbird's nearly closed eyes, gleaming with slithers of gold. Shh! Madame Fourcard hushed as the stag stepped quietly beside them. The three rabbits edged closer, their paws poised to race away. It's a little small for a crow. Henri whispered, nudging the bird with his nose. He grimaced as its acrid smell rushed up his nostrils. Oh, whatever it is, the hedgehog said, gazing into the treetops. We can't stay in the open like this for much longer. It could be a trap. The animals looked into the forest with their hackles rising. The rest of Noah's Ark had vanished into the thick undergrowth, and Pip swallowed, wondering what else could be watching them from hiding places they did not know of. We can't just leave it here, Pip said, nerves jangling as she slid from the rabbit's back to the forest floor and approached the bird. It looked harmless, as though it were just sleeping with its beak open, and Pip's ears pricked, waiting to hear a snore. If it's in trouble, we should do something. It's dead, one of the rabbits said, prodding its limp wing with its paw. There's nothing we can do. Come, Madame Fourcade said. His soul is beyond our help. Wait, Pip said, staring at its thin, bony chest, willing for it to rise and fall. Its tattered feathers hung from its fragile body, and her stomach clenched, catching its sour stench in her nose. 
as she stared at its eyes for a flicker of life. Thunder clapped above the trees and the rain fell heavier through the forest. I'm sorry, she said, gently stroking the bird's listless head. I hope you didn't suffer too much. Don't touch it, Madame Fulcard snapped, quills dripping with water. It might be diseased. Pip snapped her paw away, a strange black dust clinging to her palm. A plump raindrop landed on the bird and trickled down its neck, exposing a trail of shimmering green and purple feathers. Oh, let it rest in peace, the hedgehog said firmly. It could have been sent to draw us away from our hideout. It's time to return to the warren now. It was then that the blackbird's eyes snapped open, burning bright amber, and Pip and the others stumbled backwards in fright, watching its haggard body heave. That's all I can read for now.